Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy of all the glory, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. As we begin this service, I just want everyone to stand so that we may lift praises to Jesus. Because he's been so very good to us. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty?
Jesus, as I come before you today, O oh God, Lord Jesus, being a king before you, O oh God, Lord Jesus, in your great and holy presence, O oh God, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will forgive us, Lord Jesus, for the sins that we know that we have committed, O oh God, Lord Jesus, forgive us for the sins that we know that we have not committed, Lord Jesus, and help us to forgive each other, Lord God. And help us to forgive 
those that we don't want to forgive, Lord Jesus, because forgiveness is not of you, O God. Forgive, unforgiveness is not of you, O God. And Lord Jesus, we cannot tolerate unforgiveness in your house, O God. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, against every sickness, O God, Lord Jesus, that you will heal, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, let the lame walk, Lord Jesus, and lame to rise and jump, O God, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will help us to go through the problems that we face on our daily lives, Lord Jesus. Jesus, you know what we go through, Lord Jesus. You know how it struggles, O God. Jesus, so I fight against every depression, Lord Jesus. Jesus, we bind them up in your name, O God. Jesus, we fight against every suicide spirit in your name, O God, Jesus. We fight against every lazy spirit, Lord Jesus, that let us not want to worship in your house, O God. Jesus, we fight against every stubborn spirit, Lord Jesus, that does not want to listen to us, O God. Jesus, I we pray, Lord Jesus, that miracles, signs, and wonders will be done in your house, O God. Jesus, that spirits, like souls, will be filled with your Holy Ghost, O God. That souls will come unto you, O God. That souls will hear the gospel and come to you, O God, Lord Jesus. That people will come to you with a willing heart, O God. And open up to you that they can be filled with your Holy Ghost, O God. Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless us, O God, Jesus. Give us the strength to worship in your house, O oh God, Lord Jesus. Give us the strength to minister unto others and to pray for each other, O oh God. Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bless the musicians, O oh God. That you bless the singers, O oh God, that they will minister unto your people, O oh God. That the words that they sing, Lord, will have power unto us, O oh God. That they will help us to go through the things that we are going through, Lord Jesus. That they will bring people closer to you, O oh God, and not to ourselves, O oh God. Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will let your will be done in the service today, O oh God, Jesus. Fill us, Lord Jesus, anoint us, O oh God. Let your spirit flow through the service today, O oh God. In your name I pray, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is so good. Hasn't God been good to everybody? And then I look like good, good too, no? And I look not dead. But the theme for the service today is refocus, it's reaping time. Refocus, it is reaping time. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill your temple, Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Welcome, 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 blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord, Jesus. So as Sister Gabriel mentioned, it is our Youth Sunday, and our theme for this Youth Sunday is refocus. It is reaping time. Can I hear you say the theme for me? One more time. What do you think you're focusing it on? What do you think you're focusing? God? 
Jesus, God and Jesus, same person. What do you think we're focusing on? What are we refocusing on? Souls. Yes, that's a great answer. God, Jesus, souls. Really what we're refocusing on is the mission, right? The mission that we've been given by God to go into all nations and to do our part as witnesses. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord God. So we are refocusing on what is important. We have a lot of distractions in this life. And we are finding the most important thing and we're focusing on it. Amen. So I just like to welcome everyone to service this morning. It's really good to see so many children out front. I saw Sister Foskins bring a whole lot of children with her this morning. I am assuming they're your neighbors, Sister Foskins. Yes, for Neighbors Sunday. So anybody else brought their neighbors? I'm seeing a few visitors in the house. Praise the Lord Jesus. Sister Nati says she brought her neighbor. Anyone else brought their neighbors? Praise the Lord in the head scratches. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we thank you for the persons who have come out this up uh, this morning. I'm just gonna ask our visitors to stand. So the young children at the front, you guys can stand. Um, the young lady to the back. Praise the Lord Jesus. Welcome. Um, the young man to the back. I believe that's Brother Choi's nephew. Brother, brother, I knew that. Praise the Lord. You're not really a visitor. Praise the Lord. I'm um, that sister from King Street. You haven't been with us for a while. You came back last week. Praise the Lord, sis. So, yes, I see a visitor sitting there beside Sister Henry in the nice bonnets. Praise the Lord, Jesus. What's her name? Karen. Hi, Karen. Praise the Lord, Jesus. It's so nice to see you. So, I'm just really glad. I'm really glad that so many persons came out to the house of the Lord. And I'm praying as the service progresses that more persons will come out. So we just thank the Lord Jesus for that. So I pray that you just have an awesome time worshiping with us. And don't feel uncomfortable. Just continue to worship the Lord and sing praises to his name. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are happy people. Yes, we are. We are happy people. Yes, we are. We baptize in Jesus' name. Talking to Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. I'll wait for you to find it. See. Praise Jesus. God has been just so good. Hallelujah. Deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus. Daily let me go. Higher, higher in the school of wisdom, more of grace to know.
the reading of the scripture, it will be taken from 1 Peter 2, verses 1 to 25, and Sister Tina Shea will be reading the scripture. Praise Jesus. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our scripture reading will be taken from 1 Peter 2, from verses 1 to 35. We'll read alternately. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. If so, be have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto, who, unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. 
Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which, which war against the soul. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to, a, to the king as supreme. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Twenty-five and last, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. We end our lesson by saying, "Thanks be to God." There is no satisfaction without salvation. S A L V A T I O N. And you can no satisfaction without salvation. S A L V A T I O N. Shout it out loud and clear. S A L V A T I O N.
you guys know this part. There's this part that says, and you can go to heaven without salvation. S A L B A T I O N. You can go to heaven without salvation. S A L B A T. And we're gonna shout. Oh, we're gonna shout. Mighty name of Jesus, everybody. Praise, praise him one more time. We are alive and well. Praise him again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. God is so, so, so good to me. I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for him. Amen. I remember one time, oh, not a couple weeks ago, I was on my way from school. And uh, I stopped somewhere, but, you know, it was late. And uh, I called a taxi driver to pick me up from out by Shepherd's Pier. And uh, when I reached out there, he did pick up some people and gone already. So, in my mind, I was saying that, you know, I should wait, but I won't go home. Right? It's late. And uh, I decided to go on a taxi. Luckily, before that, it's like my spirit urged me to pray before hand. And uh, I didn't know what it was for, but eventually, when I went on the taxi and uh, it moved off now, it began to speed. And right out by hospital gate, I was rushing across the stoplight and we met in an accident. Right? Thank God. Right? It was only the grace of God, I believe. 
but I am alive and I'm here to give this testimony today. Only the grace of God, right? I'm thanking Jesus for a whole lot more. And I'm going to glorify his name. I'm going to give him all, all of me. Because there's so many things that could have happened to us. But we are here and alive today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God has been so good to all of us. I'm sure we all have a testimony. I'm sure we all have something that God has done for us in our lives. So I just want us to stand and we're going to worship and we're going to sing a song. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. God has been so good. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises, hallelujah, for God is a king over all the earth, praises unto him, the Lord stand the day, so clap your hands and shout, holy people.
this time, we're gonna ask Sister Zoe to do the announcement. Musicians, praise the Lord Jesus. And we'll be going straight into our announcements at this time. Praise the Lord Jesus. Next week, Sunday at 6 a.m., we'll be having Riley Dividing the Word on Fame 95 FM. And you can visit us at www.fame95fm.com to hear that broadcast at 7 a.m. We meet in the sanctuary for a prayer meeting at 7:30. Our YouTube service will go on stream and at 8 we'll be having our sunday school session followed by our 9 a.m morning worship service at 5 30 we'll reconvene for a prayer meet so we encourage you as always to visit like and share and subscribe to our youtube channel that's pentecostal lighthouse upcj and you can access that at our YouTube URL, which is www.youtube slash C slash Pentecostal Lighthouse UPCJ dash X2 dash 38. Praise the Lord Jesus. We continuously encourage persons to donate toward the construction of the sanctuary at 11 King Street. It is coming along quite nicely. So we appreciate your donations thus far and continue to ask for you to make that sacrifice and donate to the King Street Project. As such, should your envelopes be labeled King Street Project and checks should be made payable to Pentecostal Lighthouse. And for direct transfers, you may contact any one of our leaders for our banking information. You may contact us by sending an email to pentlightupcj, 
upc at gmail.com or by phone or WhatsApp at 876-781-9606 plus one if you are contacting from overseas. If you are interested in being a part of our services or to speak with a minister in case you want to arrange for a personal Bible study, baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, baby dedication, counseling, and marriages and funerals. We thank you for joining us for worship and the Lord Jesus Christ. We recently bless you and we hope you enjoy the rest of our service. Praise the Lord.
until you come again I'll just sing hallelujah until you come again and I will dance in your presence until you come again everybody will sing hallelujah we'll sing hallelujah until you come again in your presence till you come and we'll sing hallelujah we'll sing hallelujah till you come and we'll dance and we'll dance in your presence until you come and we'll sing hallelujah we will sing hallelujah till you come
just want to be with you. the Lord. Let's just lift his name on high. Oh, Jesus, he's done something for you. Just exalt him. He's been so good. He's been so kind. Oh, King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
There is no point that God gets tired of you. He's always there for you. Oh, Jesus. Just two more minutes of 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 Jesus. Gonna shake off yourself and say, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, he's worthy. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. we are nothing before you. Jesus. We are nothing before you, Jesus. 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 We say Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Jesus. At this time, we'll just be welcoming the speaker for today sister Shayna Thomas York she'll be coming to say whatever the Lord has laid on her heart I pray that we may be attentive and open to what the Lord has to say because he's been so good Oh God, we love you, we love you. You're an awesome God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we praise you because of who you are, Jesus. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. God, as your servant, your daughter, your child, stand before your people. Oh, God. To bring forth a word, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that you just anoint her, God. Even though from the crown of her head, Hashandaya, to the very sole of her feet, Jesus. I pray, God, that self will be slain. God, hallelujah. And you will be magnified in this place. God, your people are here before you, God. And God, we want a word. Jesus, so many persons with so many different situations, God, that only you alone can fix, that only you alone can change. So we call upon you, great God of heaven, just to come down in our midst. Hallelujah. Oh, I pray, Lord God, that you use our servant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything, every spirit that will want to hinder her, mighty God, from speaking your truth in this place, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. And I pray, God, that your word will come forth with clarity and with power. Jesus. Huh? So that we can be edified. Let your will be done. Your perfect will be done. Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give me power.
Let your will be done, Holy Ghost. Let your will be done. Ah, glory to your name. Give us power in every situation, God. Every hour. Keep us true. You know everything about every one of us. Give us power. Every hour. Keep us true. His work must be done. I'm going to read in your hearing. You can just listen as you meditate on everything I believe the Lord is he's good and he is to be exalted before we exalt him sometimes we need to be reminded and so I'm just here to remind oh shut up Give us power. He knows all things. 
and he is perfect and he is God he is God he is God in I'm reading from Haggai 1 Haggai 1 you can just listen in the second year of Darius the king in the sixth month in the first day of the month came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and the, this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag of holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and, bring the and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow it down. Why? Say the Lord of hosts. Because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his, his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land. And upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the lands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnants of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people. I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month in the year of, the, of Darius the king. And chapter 2 verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, save the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, save the Lord of hosts. You may be seated. God is perfect. The first thing I want to say is that God is perfect. That he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that what we do, that we ought to always remember that he is the same God. Yesterday today and forever. Now, just to give some background on what's happening. So the children of, the, the Jews were in exile for some time and they were released. They went back home and they started to rebuild. There was some oppression, the enemies, they fought and so basically they didn't get to finished building. Now Haggai got the word from the Lord and he was sent to tell them to start back the process. But before he did that, he brought some things to their knowledge which 
will be from verse 4 and verses 68. 68. I'll read in a different translation. He said, Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? And verse 6, You have planted much but little harvest. You eat but you are not satisfied. You drink but you are still thirsty. You put on clothes but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then will I take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. I think it's very clear, but I will still express in everything that we do sometimes we get comforted which is the state that the children of Israel were in so because they would have received oppression from the enemy they halted rebuilding the walls the, the, the temple they halted what they were doing and so they probably didn't even think oh yes we still have the temple to rebuild and Haggai is saying don't you see what's happening no matter how much you drink, you're still thirsty. No matter how much you're going and you're trying to reap, you're still getting little harvest. No matter what you work, you're not getting enough. You put your money, it falls out your pocket, basically saying, you're not reaping. So you're getting the money, you work hard, but where is the money going to? You always need this, you always need that. And I believe what he was trying to say when he said this first, before he told them to go back to rebuild, was that because you have stopped the work of the Lord, your secular lives, their lives that they would have been doing at home, was also affected. And that is just to say, no, because as I said, it's the same God, Yes, we're in a period of grace. God is good. But we cannot expect fruit in our own lives. We wonder why our lives go like this. Why is this happening? Why is stuff like that happening? And sometimes it's just because we neglect the house of God. And I'm not talking about coming to church. Because some persons come to church. But we neglect to give God what is due unto him. I believe that today's service was really a service of worship. And at different points, the Lord would have really tried to pull from us what is due to him. And it's hard sometimes for us to give God what he deserves when we think of everything that's happening. But sometimes we don't realize that sometimes all that's happening around us is the result of our lack of giving God what he deserves. Building the walls, building the temple, doing the work in his house. And you may be wondering, oh, but persons are going through this and persons are going through that. And trust me. I am aware, probably I don't know your situation, but I know a God. I know a God that never fails, that never leaves, that never forsakes. But we allow Satan to get in our minds, and the first thing that gets neglected a lot of times if we're honest, is our relationship. So as soon with God, so as soon as everything starts to get stressful, boy, I can't come prayer meeting today, you know, because we really have to reach home for the this or work asks for that or school is this and school is that. Something. But the first thing sometimes that gets neglected is a relationship, the work of God, something along those lines. And just as Haggai, Haggai said to the Jews in that time, I'm saying to you to ensure that you understand 
where your treasures lie. And that is the first part. So that was the rebuke of sorts. Because we often don't realize when the Lord is saying, pull up your socks. And even when he says, pull up your socks, we expect our next message to come and say, pull up your socks again because God is merciful. But when will his mercy run out? I always think about that. Like, when? When will God just say, no, enough is enough? The next part is funny enough in the second chapter in verse 9. So the glory of this latter shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. You, me, I, change is constant. And we must experience change. We must experience it. It's a part of light, life. God is the only thing that I would say never changes. Everything else, it's a possibility that it can be changed, it can be shifted. And if I were supposed to put a title to today, I would say, our response to change, refocus its reaping time. Now, the choose, their response was to stop working. So they would have gone back home and everything probably looked a little different. They got the battle, they started fighting, enemies are coming against them. They stopped building. That was their reaction. That was what they did. They are now being told now, come. You have to come back. You have to work again. Haggai is saying, God has said, put everything aside. We're rebuilding. But do we really believe the word when it says to us that the latter host shall be greater than the former? Former meaning before, today. Latter meaning after, today. The result later on in the future. So me growing up here, the latter will be when I grow up older and I see what is happening here. Do you believe that the former, that the latter will be greater than the former? Do we actually, do we actually believe that? We sing songs, we talk about, yes, God is going to do this and God is what Do we believe do we believe, do we really believe that in this house, that a Pentecostal lighthouse, UPC, that the latter will be greater than the former? Do you believe that? Do you really, really believe that there's going to be a time when everything that we saw before, that there will nothing that could compare to that because God is going to do something? If you don't believe that, it will not occur. Now, when I was looking through and I was praying, I was thinking to myself about reaction versus response. And some persons may not know that there's a difference. Some, some, some people might say, oh, I just reacted to this or I just responded to that. But normally... A reaction is an impulse. So if I come to you and I box in your face, a reaction may be to slap back in the face, to get angry, to get upset. A response is going to be, okay, I thought about it and I'm gonna let and I'm not going to do it. So reaction, the difference between reaction and response is that one is emotional. So somebody does me something and I respond, I react. But a response is normally a think it through and say, you know what? I'm not going to let Satan win. I'm going to decide that I will not slap her back in the face. Or I will not box her back or get angry. So, in Ecclesiastes 6, 7, 9 to 10, it says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. 
a lot of times when we see things happening and we come to church and we say, but you know, say one time this would happen and this would happen and we get angry and we just, we don't recognize that when we do this, we harbor a culture of we not ever get better. Nothing can do here. We just, de- and it's just a church and we just this and we get caught up because we get angry. We react to everything that's happening and we just say, okay, all right, God, not no good, not the yaso. Not no good, not in a book town, not no good, not the Pentecostal lighthouse. And everybody just pass through and we just, we're just here. And if you harbor a culture of unbelief and doubt, then when God wants to move, it will not happen. Because you would have you would have harbored that in the presence, in your spirit. Because the thing is, when you sit around someone every day who is negative, what's going to happen to you? You're going to become negative. So if every day you decide to react to a situation because it's not going how you think it is go- supposed to go, then it's possible that instead of responding in positivity, we react in negativity. And I was thinking about this and I was saying, God, a guy came and he told him to do this and he told him to do that. But what did they do? Did they react or did they respond? Did they think about it and say, you know, God, I'm going to make a conscious decision to do something else, to respond differently. I grew up on a scripture when, because I, when I grew up, I, my mother used to give me, this verse is James 1 verse 19. And she said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not righteousness. If somebody is going to always be reacting to a situation, then God will not be able to move. When I say that, I mean a lot of times when we react, it's often in negative, a negative light. Not that you cannot react and be positive, but a lot of times we react, and because it's without thought, we just say what we want, say do what we want, and just boom, and we don't care. And then probably when they reach home, they say, boy, you know, I so probably may never do want to say that. I mean, you think about it, and you feel bad. But at that point, because you harbor the spirit of, you, 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 you always react. You don't think about what you say. How it impacts another. You don't learn to respond instead of react. And so, if we find ourselves often reacting, we are really idolizing ourselves. When I, that thought came to you and I was saying, idolizing, and I was saying, God, if you think about it, normally when we react, it's always me-centered. So I react because of how it hurt me or how the thought impacted me. So I just reacted. So if, if you always react, then really and truly, you're always thinking about yourself. And if you're always thinking about yourself, then you are idolizing yourself. And God cannot dwell in a place where there's idol worship. No, we think idol worship really has to be, oh, you know, there's a golden image. It, that really, you don't need that. You just need you. You just need yourself. Once you have yourself and you think so much of yourself, then really and truly you've already started idolizing something. You've idolized yourself. And once we react, once we always react, once we always just say what's on the tip of our tongues, then the walls, the temple of God will never be rebuilt. We have to harbor our spirit of response. What will I say? What will I do when somebody comes to me and they say, you know, you should not sing that song that this week, you know, I'm going to feel like it was a God leader for that. Okay. Do you say, no, I'm not going to sing again, I'm not sing no more song at church, but don't, I'm finish, finish with church, I'm finish with singing. You do that, and possibly, if you do that, if you actually react and do that, then probably you never actually reach a place in the ministry 
where God wants you so you can touch someone. You come to church, you preach a message, and when you preach, somebody comes to you and say, you can't even talk into the mic. You just open it, and we're not hearing nothing what you say. It's the first time you're preaching, and you preach, and he said, no, finish, finish now. No more, no more preaching for me. I'm finished. I'm finished preaching. That is it. Then probably you'll never reach a place where you can possibly bring forth the word to touch that same individual. If we react to anything, everything that somebody comes to us and says, whether negative or positive, if we always react, then the host of God will not strive. It is important that you recognize that truthfully, <laughs> it's not about you. And it's hard to think and to recognize truthfully that it's not about me. Who am I that somebody cannot backbite me? Who am I that somebody cannot come to me and say something that's negative? Who am I that somebody cannot lie? Who are you that somebody cannot not talk to you? Are you, any, are you so special that because of your inhibitions and what you are so worth that the kingdom of God cannot go forward? No, it will go forward. Just may go forward without you. But the truth is, sometimes because of us, what ought to happen, when it ought to happen, is delayed. Your response to change matters. Things would have happened. COVID came. All the things happened in the last two to three years. And how did we respond or react? How did we take it? What did you do? Did you say, okay, God, I'm going to fight and I'm going to work and I don't care whatever happens? Or did you say, no, boy, we can't see him now. I don't know, but Bible studies before and after. You guys can do your numbers. I'm not here, so I don't see. But I know across the board, in probably even in other churches and other organizations, that before COVID, there would have been a certain amount. COVID has come. COVID has gone. And what has happened? Now we are allowed to come back. Where are we? We've decided that after this thing that would have impacted us, that we can't come back. But the thing is, if you don't come back, then you will never get to where you should be. And all that will happen is that God will find somebody else, somewhere else, to do his work because he must get done. We are really nothing. And we get so caught up we get so caught up in us and what we are going through. No, no, please understand that I empathize, trust me. And I know that persons go through so much, so much. But it is important for us to remember that in your going through you must give God what he deserves. In your trial, you go make Satan sit on a laugh. No. Satan sit on a laugh over me sometime, you know. I don't think you guys understand. I think you just sit down and he's just looking at us. And he's just laughing. Why? Because we have decided that okay. God, I'm going through what I'm going through, and so I'm going to put everything else on hold, including the house of God and his work. And so I urge you to believe in your God. He is the same God yesterday today 
and forever. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if we do not cling to that, if we don't hold on to that realization, then we're going to allow Satan to laugh at us. He's going to laugh and we're going to say, look upon them. Look upon them. And I'm going to laugh with his scorn. Because we don't believe in our God. We don't believe in our God. And we come to church. And the God that deserves our praise. And deserves our worship. Is left to beg. No. He ought not to beg. And today, I was in church, and the presence of the Lord is here, and he, all he wanted was for us to worship. That's all he wanted. I didn't even have to be, all he wanted was for us to worship. The biggest dent you can make into Satan army is when you worship God. I'm telling you, the biggest thing, when you say, you know, I'm going to come into this house and I'm going to see the latter because when you keep looking behind, you can't see what's in front. But if you come into the house of God and you praise him regardless of your situation, that's the most, look here, Satan has the power when you do that. And sometimes we just get so caught up. We get so caught up with everything around us that we forget that God is. God is. God is. Do we know what that means? When we say that God is. God is. That's all we need to do. God is. God is. God is. Somebody needs to come to you sometime and tell it. I'm telling you, God is. That's all you need to know. To remember that this house of God, this place, these altars are sacred. Sacred. And when we come in here, and sometimes people think that I don't go through anything. And they think that, oh, she's so, she's so Shana. No, she, no, sir. She ain't going go through anything. She can go and talk. <laughs> if you know me, you can ask someone that I'm not a complainer. If you, you can ask her. I, wanna, I will just be there and I'll be going through uh, and nobody will know. And I will come into this place and everything else will not matter. Work will not matter. My bodily issues will not matter. My health will not matter. My schoolwork will not matter. My familial issues, whatever it is, will not matter. Why? Because I know the God that I serve. And I know that he deserves everything. And no matter what I ever do, every time I come into this house, I will ensure that he gets something from me. And I'm imploring you for you to see the latter reign. For you to see the latter being greater than the former. It will not happen if we come into his house and refuse to just give him what he deserves. No, we're not asking you to run the aisles. Because the truth is God knows what you can give. But to give him true, true Worship and true praise. I saw them up here and, and I was just there and I was saying, God, just, just, you know. And I sat there and I was like, God. Sometimes I wonder if, if it's that some people feel and some people don't feel. I don't know. But I think sometimes is that we're waiting for God to do something great before we do anything. Is it that? I don't know. But he will not 
<laughs> his response to us is or what we give to him. So we come here and we are saying, all right, God, do something miraculous. Okay. How is the miraculous going to happen? How is it going to happen? Oh, what, what, how is it going to happen? If we come and all we do is sit and we say, all right, God is good. And we sing out about, how will the miraculous happen? How will we feel the presence of the Lord in the way that we say we want to feel it if when we come, we don't do anything. If we don't do our part. We want a God that is going to come and to give us. Say so here, take it. But we're not willing to fight. We're not willing to fight. Jesus, we're not willing to fight. And every day we come, every week we go through some things that will come in a God house. After we go through the week, you know, remember they never did. The culture of the week is still alive. And we still don't come in here recognizing that we've got another day. I know some people who, who can't even speak. They can't do anything. They're now at a point where they just can't do anything and they're just waiting to go. They're just waiting for God to say, Come, my child, come home. And they would wish. I'm sure Sister Malcolm would wish she was here. But she's not getting older for different reasons. But we come into God's house. We expect the miraculous. And I believe it's going to happen. But will it happen with you? Will it happen with you? Or will he have to remove you? Get somebody else in to get what he has. Because it's going to happen. It is going to happen. It's just a matter of who will be a part of it. And it's so easy to get caught up, to get caught up with everything because it's happened to me. But then when I come into the house and I remember that my instruction by God was not to give him praise based on what he has done for me, but because he is God, I just have to give him praise. Because what? He is God. And I urge you to remember that he is God. That is it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And for those who are struggling in belief in God because sometimes they see us and they say you got the Holy Ghost, you're a Christian but they don't realize that because we go through things there are times when you struggle to believe in God you struggle to understand God, why this happened to me? I must come at church. You, you struggle and you cannot get it. You're, you're just stuck at the point where you're like, I'm just finished. I'm not giving him anything because I cannot understand why all of this is happening. What I can say to you, which may not be of much, but I always remember Job. When things are getting, I remember Job and I remember that God gave Satan permission to do all of what was done for a reason. To prove that Job was indeed his. Prove to Satan that you are God's daughter. That you are God's son. Prove. Prove to him and him demon friend him that trying to push you one side. Prove to them who you are. Prove to them that they cannot win. That when they want to laugh at your calamity. That God is with you. 
He gave him permission. He couldn't touch you without the permission of God. Are you going to allow Satan and his angels to laugh in God's house? Are you mad? In God's temple? Jesus. Satan wishes to destroy. But God is. God is. God is. God is. God is. And for those who don't believe it, I will believe it for you. God is. God is. God is. He is everything. And you've forgotten. I know there are people here who have forgotten. You've forgotten who God is. You're grieving. You're in pain. You're not seeing anything work. You say, oh, what is, where am I a Christian? You're a Christian for that reason. To prove that God is. And the latter must be great. The word said it. Word of God said it. The latter will be great. Turn on the former. Do you believe it? If you don't believe it, he will remove you. And you will get somebody else. If it has to be a Jehovah witness. If it has to be somebody else. You have to fill out the street. He will get somebody else who believes it. Because his work be done. So it's reaping time. Oh, but if we don't believe, we're not going to reap. If we don't believe, it's not going to reap. For there's a race. That I must run and a victory to be won. Give me power every hour. Keep me true. For there's a to run and a victory to be won give me power every hour keep me for there's a race that you must run Holy Ghost to be one Give us power Hallelujah. 
at this time. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Jesus. 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 I'm going to ask everyone to come to the altar. Now, it doesn't have to be everyone. But everyone who you feel as though you don't see the latter you don't see what is coming and or you are going through so much you're going through so much and you don't understand why i'm asking you to come it don't have to be that you have a sin i'm just asking you to come to the altar because you see this altar this place this is holy ground and the spirit of the Lord dwells here. And because he's here, he can do anything. And so the altars are open for that same reason. We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And because we are the body of Christ, we lean on each other. Hallelujah. And we lean on the Holy Ghost. Give us power every hour. Keep us through for there.
Father, let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you. There are children here. The future of this church. Hallelujah. Just pray unto the Lord. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. As you pray for yourself. Or for your offspring. Pray with your heart and your body and your soul in love. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus Christ. You are God all by yourself. Jesus. You are God all by yourself. Uh, you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Jesus. Hallelujah. You are all powerful. And Lord God, there are souls who are here. Oh God, you are going through so much. But I place everyone before you this morning. I ask Lord God in heaven that even as we're here together, that Lord, that you will touch the minds of your people. That Lord God, that you will go there, Lord Jesus. And God, that where Satan has perverted, that Lord God, that you will send forth thoughts of clarity. Lord, that you will send forth positive thoughts. So many of us are sinking. Sinking, Lord, on our own because we, we have lost our way. We have not vaccinated, but God, we have lost our way. So many persons here are low in the spirit. And they cannot even worship you, God. They cannot even give you praise. But Lord, even now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I place, I place them before you. I place every single individual here before you, Jesus Christ. I ask God in heaven that you will touch their minds and their spirits. God, that you will allow them to recognize Lord Jesus they do nothing on their own. That they cannot function on their own. Two. Mm -hmm. 
everything else remains. I give you, God, I hope, Lord, I hope. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. One last time, give me you. Jesus and the words that you have rested on her heart, God. Jesus, even as we're leaving here, Lord God, we're saying that we believe. We're saying, God, give us more of you, God, because we are ready to work. We are ready to reap. We are ready for you to outpour on us, Lord. We believe your word. We believe your scriptures. We believe what you said in Joel, and we believe what you said through your prophet Haggai. Jesus greater is within us and more is coming God so give us more thank you Lord Jesus we pray that you bless our mother Rachel so we thank you for using her this morning we thank you for using your singers your musicians Lord God your ushers your congregants your leaders Lord God we believe that something has shifted that something special has happened in the atmosphere Lord we are claiming it and we believe it in the name of Jesus hallelujah God we thank you for what you have done and we open our eyes Lord God looking in the spirit looking forward at the latter at the blessing at the greater at the promise Jesus we believe and we thank you God we thank you and even as we leave out of your presence lord in the sanctuary we pray that it goes with us that you rest on us for the rest of the day for the rest of the week lord god as we go to school and work that you will saturate us god that you will be with us lord god that you will comfort us that you will remind us lord that we are not alone but god emmanuel is with us hallelujah god of jacob is our refuge we thank you for what you have done and we believe you for more in Jesus name we do the benediction now from Jude chapter Jude 1 verse 24 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling 
and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God or Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming and God bless you in Jesus' name.